Okay, welcome back. We are in section 1.5, and this is the place where we're going to formally um, define how to work with infinitesimal numbers, as well as the reciprocals, find infinite numbers. So this is probably the most important set of videos in this whole series, and that this is the foundation, the framework of how we're going to talk about calculus. How we're going to talk about making infinitesimal changes and seeing what the effects are, whether it's on a graph, whether it's in a physical problem, or any other kind of application. So uh, be sure that you are paying close attention, taking good notes, reading this section. Um, I'll touch on, on the key ideas, uh, but you really need to invest some time in these concepts and how to, to really what's at the heart of this is how to do algebra and work with these new kind of numbers. So the three underlying uh, principles that, that will give us the format, format or the um, foundation to talk about infinitesimals um, uh, is the uh, extension principle, the standard, uh, tr sorry, the transfer principle, and the standard part principle. We will look at the extension principle and transfer principle in this section, and then 1.6 is looking at the standard part principle. So first, let's just jump in. When I say the um, extension principle, I'm looking at this three statements right here. And so remember, we've got the real numbers, as we talked about in the last section, we're going to extend it into the hyperreals. And so now we've got a new set of numbers called the hyperreals. And they're going to have some uh, characteristics. One, one of the most important, is that it's going to be well ordered. So this first statement is all about that uh, just like we could in the reals, we can take any two numbers and decide which one's bigger than the other. We can do so as well in the uh, hyperreals. These this new bigger set of numbers, we're still going to have an inequality. We're still going to be able to compare two numbers and decide which one's bigger than another. The second principle, which actually I think should be the first, is that there actually is a non-zero hyperreal number. There's a, uh, an infinitesimal. Uh, that is smaller than every real number, every positive real number, and bigger than every negative real number. And then part C um, is, allows us to extend all the functions that we're used to into the hyperreal. So if we have uh, the sine function, the natural log function, tri you know, all, all the functions that uh, um, you've been introduced to in your algebra and pre-calculus life, uh, are going to transfer directly in the hyperreals, and all the rules will transfer with it. So let's focus on this first principle, part A, and let's be very formal about it. Um, because, uh, again, you, you've seen this before in your, in your pre-calculus and algebra days, but it's important to have it back in our mind. There are six ideas or rules of inequality. The first one says you can compare any two numbers. The second one says that if, uh, um, if A is less than B, if B is less than C, then A is less than C. So maybe if I were to um, kind of draw a number line here, we could kind of see what's going on here. So if I have A less than B, let's just make everybody positive to make life easy. A is less than B is less than C. So A is less than B, B is less than C, then clearly it doesn't take a rocket science to see that A is less than C. The second principle says it's closing or addition. So if I take A and add C to it, I would be, say, out here. And if I took B and added that same number, I would be, whoops, that was supposed to be a C. Ah. Sorry about that. So if A plus C should be less than B plus C. Uh, similarly, if C is positive, then uh, multiplication preserves inequality too. So if I take a positive real number, uh, well, in this case, it's going to be a positive hyperreal number. Um, so if I take any hyperreal number, I multiply it by A, um, then I don't know, A times C is maybe somewhere, uh, maybe it's a different color. But still, it's going to be A times C is maybe here, AC, and BC would be somewhere over here. Um, and then uh, this deals with if I multiply by negatives, then the inequality switches. And then reciprocals, 
Um, I didn't give myself enough room here. But if, if we've got A here, it's reciprocal, um, assuming this is bigger than one maybe. So, but the reciprocal is gonna be down here. This is one over A, uh, well this would be one over B, and then maybe here is one over A. Sorry for everything being on top of each other. I didn't leave myself enough room. But, but again, hopefully this is, these six rules should be intuitively uh, obvious to you. Just think about it with real numbers. Uh, you know, we know that say three is less than seven. Well then clearly one seventh is less than one third. Um, or uh, it doesn't have to be numbers that are bigger than one. We could say, well, um, maybe two, uh, two fifths is less than three fifths. And you should be able to convince yourself that the reciprocal, five thirds, is less than five halves. And um, if you don't remember how to do this, you can see that a fraction is less than the other if I do cross multiplication. So doing the cross multiplication here, um, and I get that, uh, do cross multiply two times five, and look at three times five, and since 10 is less than 15, right? since that's the cross multiplication here, two times five is 10, and three times five is 15, since 10 is less than 15, then this is a true statement, five thirds is less than five halves. Um, so probably it's been a while since you've done comparisons with fractions, but this rule just says, no matter what, if A and B are positive, if A and B are positive, then if I look at their reciprocals, well, the reciprocals are still positive, and the relationship gets flipped. Okay, so that's, that's great that we have an intuition for real numbers, but how does this work with infinitesimals? So let's say that um, epsilon is a positive infinitesimal. Okay, so it's positive, uh, so again, we, we have the real number line. We can look at, here's zero, and then if we take our microscope, as we've said, we can zoom way in here, zoom way in here. And so let's, this is looking all around zero with our, with our super uh, infinitesimal microscope, and we can still see the number line, and Let's say here's uh, zero, then epsilon somewhere in here, it's some infinitesimal. And it's smaller, remember, epsilon is smaller than every positive real number. So epsilon is strictly less than A for all A um, in the positive real number. So that's the characteristics of our infinitesimal. It's a positive infinitesimal, so it's bigger than zero, and it's smaller than every real number. So we already know its relationship. So you know, coming back here, we know that every hyperreal has to be comparable to every other number. So if you give me a positive real number, we right off the bat know that epsilon's smaller than that positive real number. But how about other infinitesimals? What if I look at, um, I don't know, let's say uh, uh, maybe negative epsilon. Well, that's an easy one. Negative epsilon's down here. So it's going to be smaller than epsilon. How about, um, maybe more difficult though, would be uh, how about epsilon cubed or epsilon squared or um, seven epsilon? or epsilon over 100, or uh, maybe the square root of epsilon, or um, epsilon plus square root of epsilon. So negative epsilon, easy, it's right there. What about all these guys? They're positive. Where are they on the number line? Are they smaller than epsilon? Are they bigger than epsilon? And how are they comparable to themselves? 
so there's a good place to pause. Uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, discuss where these guys sit in comparison to each other in the next part. Um, but before you jump and watch that video, see if you can reason out. See if you can come back here, use these rules. You know that if I add a positive, or if I add anything, it's preserved. If I multiply, it's preserved by, if I multiply by a positive number, if I multiply by a negative, and what a reciprocal. So uh, before you watch the next video, I'd encourage you to see if you could just figure out yourself how do these all compare to each other and how do they compare in particular to epsilon. And we'll answer that question in the next session.